Welcome back to Farm and Hammer, everyone. I left you guys on a bad note last video, and then I disappeared for a couple weeks. But I'm back, and like always, I just got really busy the last couple weeks and didn't have time for a video. So today I'm gonna update you guys on the bottle calf situation, uh, kind of show you what's going on there, let you know what the vet results were, and uh, then I'll just kind of give you guys some general updates on the farm while I've been gone. But before we get into any of that, I'm gonna get the calves fed. You can probably hear them in the background mooing. They saw me walk through here with buckets, so they think they're about to get fed. So mixing calf feed for the calves. This here is the bagged um, high protein calf feed. Uh, it's sweet, the calves really like it. Just slightly less protein than what I had them on when they were on milk. Uh, and then this is just your normal run of the mill feed. Uh, I think it's 8%. Anyway, this is the stuff we buy in bulk that we get out of this bin here. So basically I mix them about 50-50. Um, since these calves are all weaned, they still need higher percent protein than eight, uh, but they don't need 15 or 16. So uh, just mixing it, trying to get a good, a good 10 to 12% um, feed. The calves have been growing pretty well on this, so um, I, think it's, I think this mix is actually doing okay for them. Anyway, there's not a whole lot to it, but. A little bit of that. That. Anyway, so here you have it. Um, obviously, they aren't mixed perfectly but actually just dumping them in between buckets actually works quite well. You can see the darker pellets and then the lighter pellets. Yep, pretty simple, but it does the trick. Uh, calves, calves can't pick out the sweet feed and leave the rest. So most of these calves here are the younger ones. Uh, they tend to hang out up here by the hay feeder and the grain feeders. Um, the older ones, they tend to come out here in the pasture, which is where I'd prefer them all to be. But uh, I gotta come out here every day and try to call all the older ones in. We got a couple here close, but. Okay, so there's three of them. I gotta walk them up, then I'll go try to find the others. And the rest of them, looks like they're all right here. All right, so we've got all the calves here now. Um, there's 32 out here that are weaned. I've still got a few on the heat wave right now. Um, obviously we got younger ones like this that were just weaned last week. Um, and we've got some of the Jersey crosses, they're just small. But you can see ones like that, ones like that one. They're just some big, big bodied calves um, and they're growing super well. Um, can't complain about them whatsoever. So um, all these calves are doing fine. Sure, they're coughing a little bit here and there. That's mostly due to the rain. Uh, we've been having some nasty wet weather, as you can maybe tell. This whole area is just muddy and covered in manure. Mm -hmm. 
and I do fill up their little hay manger here once a day. I'm sure as they finish off the rest of the green grass and as they get bigger, they'll be eating a whole lot more than one of these per day. Uh, but as of right now, they're not eating a whole lot of hay. But anyway, these are all the weaned calves. Um, I'm gonna get out of the wind here and tell you the story about the vet results and uh, sort of what the vet decided was going on with these calves. So back in the old calf shed, um, just to get out of the wind, as you can see, I've got one bag of milk replacer left. This heat wave is currently not being used because I've emptied this barn out since. Anyway, it's about time I start getting all this cleaned up and cleaned out because as you guys know, I had some sort of disease run through the calf herd this year. And uh, last video I posted, I had told you guys I'd lost quite a few. Um, and since then, I have actually not lost anymore, which is great news. Um, we also got the lab results back from the vet. So just to give a quick recap on what was going on for those of you that missed it, um, there was one point I was losing three or four calves a day. Uh, the night before, they'd be drinking on the heat wave just fine. They acted normal. Um, they didn't show any signs of sickness. Their ears weren't drooping, nothing like that. They weren't coughing. Um, but I'd come out the next morning and they'd be flipped over dead. So one of the mornings I lost four calves. I took those four calves to the vet. They did necropsies on all of them and all they could tell was a couple of them had black on the bottom of their lungs and the vet said basically they wouldn't know anything until they got the lab results back but they did say there was a chance that um, the dust from the drought this year um, when I first got them it may have caused some lung damage then they got exposed to pneumonia then it killed them off um, all of a sudden so he said that could be it, but he said they'd get some tissue samples, send those off to the lab and see what they could find out. So pretty much every night, if there was one that looked at me wrong, um, it got a shot of Draxin, even though Draxin really hadn't done much um, before that, um, for whatever this disease was. Uh, that's what the vet recommended me do, because we didn't know what it was yet. Um, so I'd pretty much be out here from eight at night till two in the morning, just sitting here watching calves. I was pretty bored. And you know I was pretty bored, because I was listening to podcasts and braiding bailing twine for no reason uh, but these do make good feeder ropes so anyway so i just sit in the barn for three or four hours every night just watch for calves if there's any signs of anything and there was only one calf that really started dying while i was out here and uh, that one that one it, it went down pretty quick so didn't get much accomplished watching for sick calves they were still dead in the morning the vet called me about three weeks later and said they got the lab results in and essentially the lab results came back as negative for everything, which was no help whatsoever. Um, he said it wasn't bacterial and it wasn't viral, whatever it was. He's guessing they just didn't get enough colostrum and they had a really weak immune system um, and they just started dying all at the same time, which I have a hard time believing and I think he did too, but he had nothing else to give me. So I still have no answers. Luckily, since the last video I posted, I haven't lost any calves. So I think it is pretty much over with. Um, almost all of them are weaned. I've got six or seven that are still in the barn on the heat wave. Uh, but the other 32, like I mentioned, are weaned and doing well. Uh, even the youngest ones out there have been weaned like a week. So anyway, I'd say whatever the disease was or whatever sickness or illness it was, um, I'd say it's pretty much passed through all of them. And the ones that were gonna die have already died and uh, I've got the healthy ones left, that's my guess. But the reason I don't think it was due to a lack of colostrum is because I bought calves from three different groups of people. Two of those farmers, um, they left the calves on the cow for three to seven days. Um, so I know the calves got colostrum or else they wouldn't have made it this long. And the reason I know that, um, one of them, one of the farmers I've been buying calves from for a long time, um, and I'd actually have to go out there and occasionally catch a calf that was still on the cow. So I know those calves are getting colostrum, yet I still lost calves from that group. The other dairy, um, they are doing the same thing, except they'd catch them for me, bring them to me, and I lost calves from that group as well. So uh, the third group was the really big dairy, so it wouldn't surprise me if they weren't getting all the colostrum they needed. But like I said, I lost calves from all three groups, and I know for a fact the other two were still getting colostrum. So. I spent some money, lost more calves, and still didn't get any answers. But um, anyway, that's farming sometimes. Anyway, that is the story on bottle calves. Now to give you guys sort of an update on the rest of the farm. As you can see, the working pens here are all muddied up, and that's because we ran our big herd. We ran the entire herd through. Uh, we sorted out all of the spring calving cows. We had all them preg checked, and uh, we sold all the ones that were open. There are about 10 cows open on this farm, 
and uh, three of those were my Holstein crosses, so I kind of expected them. Um, and then one, which is sad, it was the nurse cow, which I knew she was not bred because I saw her in heat the other day, but we're to the point where we don't have much hay and uh, we're not gonna make it through the rest of the year without selling some cows. So, but yeah, sad news, I really didn't wanna get rid of the nurse cow um, because she's been on this farm for a long time and raised a lot of calves for us, but uh, we don't really have any choice at this point. So uh, we took 10 cows to the sale barn. Um, my three black Holstein beef cross cows, they did the worst. Two of them brought 35 cents, one brought 25 cents. So someone got a good deal on them. Um, Holstein brought about 55 cents. She weighed 1,350 pounds, so she didn't do too bad. Um, and then the other beef cows, they brought 65, 68 cents. Uh, they were pretty, pretty fat. Um, so they did decently well. Um, can't complain about those, but I, I'm not too happy with the whole steam crosses there. And the guy that came and hauled the cows, he actually watched the channel, so he recognized where he was. So anyway, but some other news. We have been getting hammered with rain. We didn't get hardly any rain at all during the summer, spring and summer. So we were in a pretty bad drought. Um, and then now that it's winter and things quit growing, we are just getting hammered with it. So we've had over six inches in the last two weeks and we just got some rain this morning. I'm gonna check the rain gauge and see where we're at. There's another inch this morning. And since we didn't get much rain at all during the summer, uh, we had a couple of ponds that almost dried up or the one we're about to go look at. It was pretty much already dry. No one had cleaned that pond out for years and years. Um, so we had an excavator come out um, and he tried to scrape out the pond. Of course, now we're getting rain, so we couldn't actually drive into the pond, but he could use his arm and scrape out all the mud and manure that had built up over the last 20, 30 years. So here's the path he cleared through the woods to get to this pond. We had another path, but he didn't see it. So he just made his own, which I guess is okay. Have two entrances to the pond, I guess. Had one tiny oak log I've already cut out. Not sure if it's any, not sure if it's worth sawing, but I've got it cut just in case. And then here's the pond. <laughs> it does actually have some water in it. I'd say this is about three quarters of an acre. Um, and before it was only about as big as where the water is. He pulled all the mud out, he spread the bank out and made the pond a little bigger, so it actually hold quite a bit of water. Just to give you an idea of how much old manure and mud was in this pond, um, from the water to the top of that bank is probably eight feet, and uh, the old bank was to about right there, so. We haven't been farming this property for very long. Um, the previous owner had kind of neglected this pond because he had two other ones, so. Um, anyway, nice to see this one actually get cleaned out and uh, it's actually holding water now. So once this bank dries out, we'll get the tractor and maybe a dozer out here and uh, even the bank out so we can actually drive over it and around it. Um, that way the cows aren't, you know, trying to climb a mountain to get to the water. But So anyway guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. And with that being said, I will see you all next time.